taking around 12 billion people in one space. I felt when I was sitting up there, I was looking out over probably in that space hundreds of thousands of people, maybe a million that I could see. And everyone had walked there in peace. And I just sat there and I just felt sad that there had been so much negativity surrounding this community I was looking at, but also that that view and all these people and that experience could be the antidote to so much negativity in the news. How did you become familiar with Imam Hussein and uh, how was your experience in Iraq, especially about Arbain? So in 2017 I was approached by an Iranian arts institute which is based in Tehran. It was 10 days before Arbain and when I received the email inviting me to present the documentary it was the first I'd heard of it. For me it was like like starting again and it was a real learning curve I then came back to the UK and had this body of work which I then submitted to award bodies and publications and we had uh, I think 17 international exhibitions in 2018 and started to really start speaking about on social media and at that point, I didn't fully understand the significance of me capturing it. I just thought that, well, I've now come to realize how important it is that I documented it. Okay, so it's about coming up near 12, which is the start officially of Abayim in Kabbalah. And I'm here surrounded by all of the mocaps. It is so packed. There are very few places in the world where you can just go with no plan and it be efficient enough. The travel arrangements kind of fell through and everyone's moving in the right in the same direction so you can't get lost. Even though Farzan managed to get lost and more about a uniting peaceful walk. Uh, I want it to be an approachable topic for international media. These sorts of stories where I feel they're being misreported or not reported at all. Um, so my intention was to, to go out there and document it in a very, very humanistic way, a uh, very intimate way, and to try and uh, humanise a story that I felt had been looked at en masse in the millions. I think it was incredibly important for me as a young woman to know that I had the support of uh, you know, the, my Iranian and Iraqi colleagues. Um, I'm 25 years old and to have my, my work valued, my freedom valued, uh, the, the trust they had in me in my ability to tell the story um, as a photojournalist, that was a really extraordinary moment in my career and they have all since become like family and, and really support and guide me in the work I do. Our Bayin isn't just 40 days in Iraq, it is all year the, the organisations, the charities, the, uh, the pilgrims, the communities, and I want to show every reach. Would you suggest to any of your friends or any of your colleagues in your country to uh, you know, make this journey, go to the Middle East and pay a visit to maybe Iran or Iraq. Well, I'm very thankful that lots of my friends do and we all speak to each other about it and I'm not alone in how I feel. 
about these issues. So there's no convincing people. There are many amazing journalists who are working in these regions doing extraordinary work. Um, and uh, I hope that their work will be equally as highlighted in the media too. I believe in, in the work that I have done and I will be continuing this work for a number of years. When we're kind of looking at the media representation of certain issues in the Middle East, I have found that unlike in the in the West, there are issues in every country, but I found that Middle Eastern countries have been hit with majority negative news. But I think it's very important that young journalists such as myself um, start to, to lead the way into uh, showing the other side of, of certain countries and trying to correct the misrepresentation that exists in the media at the moment. I feel very frightened by some of the news that I read mm -hmm. and it concerns me that when people <coughs> share negative uh, news stories that no one doubts it, but that when you share a positive news story, people start to question your intentions. That the very nature of positive news is deemed on the boundaries of propaganda, whilst negative news stories have no connotation with that for some reason. I think this is uh, the kind of change in journalism. I think um, perhaps the value in social media is only just coming into play. But I intend to use my platform to kind of share these stories on my terms and it's not, it's not sort of dictated by anyone else. Um, it can be frightening at times and I try to navigate it as best I can. But I think that we will see more journalists like myself um, kind of redirecting the way that they tell stories. For me it was like, like starting again. Everyone's moving in the right in the same direction, so you can't get lost. Even though Farzan managed to get lost, I believe in in the work that I have done and I will be continuing this work for a number of years.